to the next slide, which is fine. And then you just keep on flipping. Yep. All right. Okay, I'm guys. Welcome to the Florida Scenic Highway Program Roadside Traveler Series. This FDOT sponsored series of presentations touches upon many of the untold stories of real Florida, stories that are too valuable to lose to the ages. Today, we welcome Florida storyteller Bill Ryan, a noted historian from Flagler County, who will talk to us about one of the most iconic roads in the United States, now known as Old King's Road. Through the ages, Northeast Florida became the route of choice for those heading down here to what would become Peninsular Florida. Uh, two of the roads that help carry visitors to Florida and truly have a story uh, include the King's Road and the Dixie Highway in Northeast Florida. Now, today I want to talk to you about the history of the King's Road. It was first built in 1774, and in a future presentation, I'd like to tell you the story about the Dixie Highway that had its beginnings in the early 1900s and may have changed our country. You know, uh, I wasn't always into history and uh, these roads in a way started Bill and Pat's great adventure. Uh, my wife Patricia and I built our house in Palm Coast in 1991. Uh, our Cypress Knoll community was nearly empty when we moved in and we moved next door to our best friends, Carl and Lois Reed. Uh, Flagler County and the future city of Palm Coast uh, were a real paradise back then. Being a newly retired guy, I was looking for things to do. We met Doug Sisney, who was director of the Flagler County library system, and we got involved in the construction of our new Palm Coast library branch in 1999. Now, Pat was active in the Friends, and I, I led the development of the library's first internet site, which was the first internet site for Flagler County. Uh, I did a little reverse engineering, because that's what I do. Uh, the site would later become the official Flagler County site. Also, the city of Palm Coast was established as a city in December of 1999. Now, as an official city, new residents were arriving from all over the world. Uh, over the years, I served as webmaster, auditorium governing board, and VP of the Flagler Performing Arts Center and the Flagler Auditorium. And at that time, I was so proud of Pat, uh, who was VP of the Friends of the Library, and she grew her membership to over 600, and she raised over $600,000 in donations. Now, with my interest in, in uh, history, I developed a relationship with the Flagler County Historical Society, and I met local historian Al Hadid, who's the county uh, attorney, and I read his research files, and I became hooked on the incredible history uh, that connects to the city of St. Augustine. Uh, our new library became the place to record this history. Uh, and I also got into the history tours. Uh, the history tours had been offered for many years. Uh, uh, tourists had been coming to Flagler County for over 100 years. Uh, they escaped from the northern winters and they enjoyed the beautiful sunshine and Florida beaches. Uh, one of the early tours was in 1914 on the Dixie Flyer train, and they stayed in Bunnell. So historical preservation groups hold our sense of place. Flagler County and Palm Coast were one of the fastest growing areas in America. And like our now delayed bus tours, they were held captive by the virus. We share our sense of place with you.
Today, I'd like to talk a bit more about some of those that came before us and the historic roads from Georgia into Florida. And uh, one of my talks was about buried Spanish gold in the Flagler area. Guess what? There is buried Spanish gold in our area, but that's another story. I want you to know that the real gold of Flagler County exists here, uh, and it doesn't translate into gold doubloons. That gold resides in its history, and the 300-year story that includes uh, many twists and turns. Uh, for the record, real gold was found on High Bridge Road in the eastern Flagler in the 1940s. Now, the pathways into Florida and our area became 3,000 years ago when the early Native Americans followed that Atlantic coastal ridge. And they crossed rivers, forests, wetlands, and particularly the Spanish and the English uh, discovered these Native American trails and they used them for the early roads. Now, the Spanish were here in Florida between 1565 and 1763. That, that's nearly 200 years. Uh, they'd return uh, after the American Revolution when they were given Amer uh, Florida back. Now, the son of a Menorcan refugee used Old King's Road as a result of or going to safety. His name was Jose Marino Hernandez, and he, he knew the value of an efficient transportation system. Hernandez became the first Hispanic rep in the US Congress. His goal was for King's Road to maintain an extended south down into central Florida. King's Road was functional right up into the 1920s and has been named by many uh, authorities as the most important commercial road in America. Now, for almost 200 years, the Spanish held St. Augustine as an army camp. Uh, it was to protect the roots of the Spanish treasure ships. But in our area to the south, the farmers who supplied the army camp in St. Augustine they didn't get the glory or publicity. So after serving as a Native American pathway and then formalized as a road by the Spanish, the King's Road was completed by the British in 1772, just before the American Revolution. And I hope you forgive my voice. I'm, I'm an old guy now, <laughs> but I'll try to do the best I can. Uh, the first Spanish settlement in St. Augustine lasted for about 198 years. And during that time, the Spanish made routes from the pathways originally created by those Native Americans. Uh, the Spanish used these routes primarily to support religious missionaries located along the East Coast of Florida. The British took control from the Spanish in 1763. Now that lasted for only 20 years, although their oversight uh, resulted in not too much growth. Uh, when the Spanish had been active in North Florida, the British had quickly realized that to colonize more of Florida, they needed some better roads. Uh, the experience that the British obtained by upgrading American trails in Georgia uh, ultimately became the Georgia Post Road, and it was one of the seven principal routes that were important to the U.S. in defense postal service. It helped them to better understand how to upgrade the King's Road when they took over Florida. Now, I was doing a lot of research about this time, and I found many papers in the St. Augustine History Library. And an early example of the need for better transportation occurred in 1767. Uh, that's before the American Revolution. 
when the, a Native American by the name of Gray Eyes was hired with the goal of identifying a route to bring cattle from Georgia down into Florida to feed the hungry settlers at a place called New Smyrna. Now, remember, the Menorcan settlers had not arrived as yet. So in 1767, a herd of some 500 cattle were purchased up in Georgia by a British official by the name of John Graham. He had a plan to deliver them to the town of New Smyrna in Florida, where they were intended to feed new settlers from the New Smyrna colony. Now, they'd later be called Menorcans. These new settlers were named the Menorcans after an island in the Mediterranean where they originated. But for the most part, they were trying to escape the endless wars in Europe. Now, during this cattle drive by Gray Eyes and 25 Indian boys, he encountered deep swamps and wetlands. The big herd was said to have blazed much of the trail from Georgia. by a, a bridge. The pillars of that original structure still exist today. Uh, I, I wrote a book about Gray Eyes and his adventures in trying to blaze the trail from Georgia down to New Smyrna in Florida. It's called I Am Gray Eyes. And it's part of my Flagler County, North uh, Florida history. I wrote seven books telling the various stories that I discovered. I have a new style of writing where I combine the existing records that I could find with what I think really did happen. Now, the image on the right is a real Spanish cow. The cows were delivered by a Dr. Andrew Turnbull. Uh, Dr. Turnbull sold some of this herd for money, and the rest of the cows were stolen down in New Smyrna. I doubt if the Menorcans ever got to eat any of that beef. Uh, but anyway, Gray Eyes made his initial crossing at the St. Mary's River near Coleraine, Georgia, which is the border of uh, Florida at that time. And uh, he came down uh, to what we call Jacksonville. And at that time, Jacksonville was called Cow Ford, and the cattle cross the St. John's River at that point. Then they went south into what became Flagler County and finally the new British colony at New Smyrna. Now, an early surveyor by the name of de Brom made an excellent map of the area in 1763. I was amazed when I obtained a copy of the actual map. And while it shows the, the, this great 20,000 acre land grant that were awarded to the friends of the king, uh, he also outlined routings for new roads along the east coast of Florida. So from its humble beginnings as a route that was established with his gray eyes and his cattle came a road that the Indians were able to navigate between their colonies of Georgia and Florida. Uh, I apologize for talking so so fast, but I want to get over 400 years of history here in just a few minutes. Uh, ultimately, the original British roadway, King's Road, was suitable for coaches and wagons to navigate, and most say it was finished in 1774. That's just before the American Revolution. Now, 240 years later, uh, I showed up. <laughs> and found part of the King's Road were still in existence. Uh, this is a picture of the unpaved King's Road 30 years ago. Uh, I took that when I first arrived there. The original route ran east from US-1, past the Florida Ag Museum, past the Princess Place Preserve, and into the shopping areas of downtown Palm Coast. 
uh, I'd like to show you a video I shot back then. This is Bill Ryan 20 years ago. Old Kings Road runs from the northern border of Flagler to its southern line. Today, it's pretty much a paved wandering roadway that might annoy drivers with its curves. It's now behaved all the way up to US Route 1, but this was a roadway that existed before 1767. It may well be one of the first roads in North America, at least public roads. As webmaster of the Flagler Library and working on the Flagler Memories Project, I had decided to trace Old King's Road and see how much I could find out about it. I soon discovered that there was an intact piece of the road on private property held by Lewis Wadsworth. I found that the area around Old Kings Road looks very much like it did in the 17th century. This is one of the most pristine, untouched spots in America. Its beauty is unsurpassed. Maps and surveys show that present Old King's Road falls almost exactly on the original route. It crosses Pelliser Creek, crosses the existing US-1, and turns east into Flagler County, and thence south to the Flagler County line. There is some original Old King's Road still existing on the property of Lewis Wadsworth north of Pelliser Creek. I'm Lou Wadsworth, and uh, I'm a native, seventh generation native of the state of Florida. I lived in Flagler and St. John's County all my life, on and around the Old King's Road also. In this area, we have preserved uh, an area 30 foot wide of Old King's Road and put a monument down at the end where it goes down the creek and the first bridge of the double bridge. The marker on Mr. Wadsworth's property read, the King's Road, an overland highway constructed during Florida's British colonial period, 1763 to 1784, once transversed the double bridges property at this location. The road spanned Pelliser Creek, Hewlett Branch, and swamp wetlands over a system of wooden bridges and raised earthen causeways. This crossing has long been called double bridges, named for the unusual combination of the two spans built so close together. Remnants of the King's Road, marked by road cuts to high sandy bluffs and a short section of a causeway are visible here. A longer section of the causeway can be seen in the south side of Pelliser Creek. The bridges are gone, but the remaining piers and extensive earthworks serve as monuments to this historic crossing. The causeways and bridges spanning some 625 feet of swamp land were once an important part of the 18th century road that connected St. Augustine and New Smyrna. This major project, commissioned in 1772, 
was built to solidify East Florida as the British Crown's 14th colony. Now, uh, as a result of land grants that were given by the King of England and later by the Spanish, active farms and plantations appeared along that King's Road, along the Atlantic coast. Uh, what was amazing was you had a fresh water swamp that was called later Hewitt's, uh, or rather uh, a freshwater swamp that was almost adjacent to the saltwater ocean. So this was a perfect place for the establishment of large productive plantations. Hewitt's sawmill was located on the north. With the arrival of new settlers, uh, there was a demand for lumber. A colonial hydraulic sawmill was located south of Pellicer Creek near the King's Road. Uh, it supplied lumber for housing for thousands of Tory loyalists to the King that had fled into St. Augustine following the American Revolution. This was an amazing sawmill uh, turning out lumber. Uh, here south of Pellicer Creek, uh, on the right in this picture is a model of this amazing sawmill. Now, there are incredible stories uh, connected to this Hewitt's hydraulic sawmill. One would be Fort Fulton, which would be an army fort located just to the north of that mill site. It was constructed to protect the King's Road. Now, American soldiers from the Seminole War, refugees escaping, new families moving into Florida, slaves escaping from the Northern plantations, and everything was occurring along this King's Road area. Now, many of the stories that I uncovered, and I don't have time to tell you them here, are in my books. The, for example, the Menorcans, just before the American Revolution, uh, as previously discussed, many of the settlers in the colony were from the island of Menorca. Of the thousands of settlers from all over Europe, Menorcans made up the largest percentage. Uh, these settlers were contracted to do work in that colony rather than being a slave. When the Menorcans realized how hard it was to survive in this new world, they rebelled. They were led by Martin Hernandez, which would be Hernandez's father, and they went north to gain their freedom. Uh, many fled to St. Augustine along that King's Road, and their descendants continue to be important presence in that city even today. Now, the American Revolution, uh, the British officer that bought that cattle herd, uh, who, who eventually uh, would make his way into Florida following the American Revolution. He arrived in our area of Flagler County with his family and slaves, uh, and he built four new plantations on that 20,000 acre site, today called Graham Swamp. He and nearly 17,000 British loyalists fled into Florida, literally overnight, along the King's Road and by ship. Uh, ultimately, many uh, worked at the Hewitt Sawmill. And I hope that I'm not going much too fast for you. Uh, remember, I'm trying to cover uh, 400 years here in 20 minutes. <laughs> So uh, in 1784, after the American Revolution, uh, the English gave Florida back to Spain as part of their peace treaty. Spain, uh, right then, was not nearly as strong a power as their first command of Florida, but they are still in charge of Florida. Uh, remember now, 
Napoleon's running around Europe. There's all sorts of battles and wars going on. Spain is not the power it once was. But during the second occupation, the Spanish gave out land grants to attract new settlers into Florida. And the King's Road was the important route to get in here. Uh, the Americans cooked up a invasion in 1812 that they called the Patriots. They burned that sawmill and they terrorized Spanish occupiers, trying to force them out of Florida. At the same time, a group of pirates, yeah, real pirates, formed a pirate nation in North Florida. The British held on to St. Augustine, and eventually they had to leave in 1821. The sawmill site was deserted. And soon after the U.S. arrived, officially taking uh, command of Florida, and a huge number of land grants were still given out by the federal government. Now, in 1821, Spain sadly departed after 37 years of controlling Florida. And as part of that settlement, the United States uh, got Florida, uh, swapping it for Cuba that the Spanish uh, took control of. Uh, Andrew Jackson uh, became the first governor of Florida. And from March through December of 1821, he was running things. Uh, now settlers, American settlers, were pouring into Florida. They, they were just coming down the King's Road as fast as they could get in. They were registering new plantation sites and land sites. And these were Americans showing up after 1821. Uh, Andrew Jackson is not a favorite of the Indians, <laughs> not hardly at all. He sponsored the Indian Removal Act. And as part of this act, all Indians were required to be relocated west of the Mississippi River to reservations out west. Now, this effort later became the Trail of Tears. Some Seminoles refused to relocate and they declared war on the U.S. and they were joined by many of the black Indians or African Americans who had formed settlements in Florida as escaping slaves. Christmas 1835, what a disaster. This was uh, a, a, a war. It was very similar to Vietnam. Uh, they had what they called a Dade Massacre where started the Second Seminole War, which went on for seven years. It was very similar to what happened to us in Vietnam. Plantations and farms were destroyed. Uh, John Horse was a leader of the Black Seminoles, and they were the first Black rebels to beat American slavery. Uh, until America's Civil War, the Seminole War was known as our country's most brutal war. Now, Jim Massfeller was another noted historian, and he set out to validate the location and rebuild Old Kings in North Flagler. Uh, he was connected to the St. John's Water Management District and made a partnership that actually was successful in building a walking path from Hewitt's Road uh, up to Hewitt's Creek uh, crossing. Sadly, because of the change in priorities, uh, lack of funding and political issues, the water management people couldn't finish uh, Mr. Massfeller's vision for the area. Uh, Fort Fulton, uh, Recently, historians have located Fort Fulton and plans are being made to rebuild it as an educational center. Uh, Fort Fulton is near US-1, directly opposite the Florida Agricultural Museum, but it's on private land at the present time. Heading south 
from the crossing of Old Kings at the Tomoka River. Now that's way south at the Tomoka River. Uh, it was once served by a barge. Uh, there are remnants of the Old Kings crossing right there. Uh, there's a very super deluxe restaurant called the River Grill. And if you know where you're looking, you can actually see remnants of the Old Kings Road across that beautiful Tomoka River. Now, in colonial times, there were regular stagecoach services in place throughout the state. Uh, there were routes established through Flagler County, and Kings Road was certainly one of the main routes. Here we had the Concord uh, coaches, we had the U.S. Mail Service, we had people crossing here by barge, and this was a very active place. Uh, today, the King's Road has pretty much disappeared. Parts of the old King's Road were uncovered and running adjacent to the Masonic Cemetery. Uh, it's one of the oldest and earliest African-American cemeteries in Flagler County, and the remnants of King's Road runs right through it. Okay, now I'm going to pronounce his name wrong, but a uh, remarkable historian and photographer, Ed Sarkofovich, recorded the incredible white and pink rainwater lilies. These appear every spring in this Cypress wetland, which is adjacent to the Old Kings Road, opposite the Florida Ag Museum. This is a remarkable, rare water lily. In the future, we, we dream of a walking path from up to Pellicer Creek, one of our most historic and beautiful resources in Flagler County. One could even hope that those twin bridges area we spoke about could be rebuilt using the colonial era pilings that still may be there, made of cypress wood. Uh, this area has been little examined, and it is our dream that this could become one of the great historic spots of America. Now, I hope you enjoyed this talk. Uh, I'm going very fast, and I'm trying to stay within a time limit here. Bill, thank you. Thank you for a wonderful walk through North Florida history. Uh, for those who want to learn a little more, um, either contact Bill or check out some of the links that are highlighted um, on this slide or go out and get uh, your co get a copy of one of Bill's books um, that he's written on the history of North Florida. And we look forward to your next presentation on the Old Brick Road. Thank well, you for joining us. If you want to find me, just Google Old Kings Road. I should show up somewhere if you Google Old Kings. Bye. Bill, thank you very much.